leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> on Thursday, Pat Riley elaborated to the Bleacher Report on his reaction to LeBron's departure last summer and said it was, quote, almost shocking the Heat players let LeBron get to a point where he would want to leave and go home to Cleveland. It would be like Magic and Kareem and James Worthy. They weren't, go they weren't going to go anywhere. You think Magic was going to leave Kareem? You think Kareem was going to leave Magic? You think Worthy was going to leave either one of those guys? No, they knew they had a chance to win every year and this team had a chance every year. So that was shocking to me that it happened. Now, could we have done more? Could they have done more? All right. Stephen A. Pat Riley saying it's shocking that the Miami Heat players themselves allow LeBron to get up and leave because what they had was so special. Uh, and obviously referring to the Lakers of the 80s, that would have never happened. Do you agree with what Pat Riley is saying? No, I respectfully disagree with Pat Riley. And I was surprised that he said such a thing because Pat Riley... Um, you know how I feel about this organization, Skip, from Mickey Harrison to Pat Riley on down to Mickey Harrison's son, Nick, and, you know, everybody included. I mean, even to the media relations people, Rob Wilson and, you know, Tim, you know, Tim Donovan and all of these other guys. I've known these guys for years in an absolutely fabulous, sensational organization. Uh, but Pat Riley is wrong on this particular instance, and I would tell him if I saw him. And here's the reason why. Pat Riley is not accepting accountability for the cachet that Pat Riley wields. Pat Riley can have a profound impact on anything he touches as he has proven throughout the years. Even though he never won a championship in New York, he's still the winner within because of those rings with the Los Angeles Lakers in Showtime because of his, you know, his stout uh, expertise and incredible performance as an executive for the Miami Heat. Pat Riley runs South Beach, and Pat Riley had a lot to do with LeBron leaving. First of all, coming to LeBron James, looking for him yet again to settle for less than the max with the TV money coming down the pike is one thing. Uh, you know, being somebody that didn't want to ingratiate himself uh, with LeBron's crew the way that, you know, LeBron would have liked you to. You can put point to this stuff and say it's petty and all of that other stuff. But the bottom line is LeBron James isn't an everyday player. He's a once in a generation caliber player. He's top 10 all time in NBA history. There are certain people that deserve and have earned the cachet to be treated differently. There was a time when Pat Riley uh, would allow, you know, I don't want to say friends, but family members, significant others or whatever to be on the team playing. That kind of stuff changed once LeBron James arrived. His boys on the opposite end of the bench, sitting courtside, but not near the heat bench. That resonated with LeBron James. Access to, to the locker room or whatever the case may be. Just some of the things that you heard. Uh, all the particulars are, are open for debate because you sort of get that stuff from one side, but it's one of the things, or it's some of the things rather, that you heard continuously leading up to LeBron James' imminent departure from Miami and electing to go back home. Now the players will tell you, and the organization will tell you, that's the past, we're moving forward. Nobody wants to talk about that because in their mind, the bottom line is the deed is done, LeBron wanted to go home. Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and all of those guys personally told me, look, we got no problem, he's still our brother, we love him dearly. He wanted to go home. It's just that simple. But it wasn't just that simple at the time it transpired, Skip, because Pat Riley had something to do with that. I'm not saying he ran LeBron out of town or anything. I would never disrespect Pat, Pat Riley like that. LeBron definitely was leaning towards leaving. But Pat Riley's a very prideful individual, and he's about the mission. And he's about everybody playing their role and doing what they're supposed to do in order to accomplish the chip. That is what he's about. He is not about kissing anybody's behind. Yep. He is not about ingratiating himself to the point where you feel like you're on his level. No. There's a chain of command and there's a level of cachet and stature that other people hold. And when it comes to Pat Riley, LeBron James was an absolutely sensational superstar caliber player. But that's what he was. He wasn't the president of Miami Heat. He wasn't the owner of the Miami Heat. He didn't run South Beach. That was Pat Riley's job. And Pat Riley was going to make that very clear, which is why he was so upset when LeBron sent him to his agent, Rich Paul, and said, you know, talk to him. Rich Paul told Pat Riley, you're going to have to talk to me. 
not not LeBron. LeBron wants you to talk to me. Pat Riley was incredibly offended by that, which is why he had issued that press, had that press conference over the summertime that he had, because he's like, look, I've been I've been the presiding over this organization, and this man's been under my wing for four years. What do you mean, talk to you and not talk to him when Pat Riley was looking for LeBron? That kind of stuff rubbed Pat Riley the wrong way, but it was because, in part, LeBron had been rubbed the wrong way mm. by Pat Riley mm. to some degree. Nothing. Nothing no, contentious or anything like that, but he wasn't in Miami what he is in Cleveland. Okay, on this topic, I do respect your position, but I respect Pat Riley's a little more. The only thing I don't love so do I. about Pat Riley is I don't know why he keeps talking about this. He should just let this go. It's over. It's not going to be undone. LeBron James is a Cleveland Cavalier, but I assume Pat was asked about it and he finally decided to just speak his heart sort of in retrospect. And Stephen A, you know this. This is an old, old school view here. This is right. talking about great players banding together and sticking together and seeing it through, through the tough times. They got blown out in the finals in five games by the Spurs last year by a record margin. That's not when you turn tail and run home. That's when you pull together because you are brothers. And they all talked about being brothers. And again, do I think that LeBron and D. Wade are about as close to being real brothers as you can be? I do. But this is just me, Stephen A., because Dwayne said all the right things publicly. In Dwayne, this is just my two cents from a distance. In Dwayne's heart of hearts, I think he's still a little hurt that LeBron left him. I just believe that. I, again, you can discount it all you want. I, I know this for a fact. Pat Riley would have loved to face the Cavaliers in this year's playoffs. You can laugh all you want about that with the beat up Miami Heat and, and Dwayne's struggling a little bit, although he's been pretty good of late. No bosh, but he, he would just love to take a crack at them. It's old school. It's let's get even with them. But my point is, you're, you're right. Pat Riley was never going to stoop to coddle LeBron's crew. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't play that game. He is not going to kiss LeBron's golden tail. And he's saying these are great players who need to feed off each other and stick together. And I'm with that. I, that's that's what Magic well, and Kareem did. That that's what happened. James Ward, they, well, Byron Scott, they stuck together. A couple of quick points before we end this subject out. First of all, I wasn't saying that Pat Riley should have kissed their tush. I want to be clear about that. I have no problem with old school methodology. As a matter of fact, I employ a lot of it myself. All I'm saying is, is that let's not negate the fact that that may have played a role in facilitating LeBron's departure. Let's not act like that had nothing to do with it, especially when you're trying to lean on the players and their relationship to usurp the business aspect of it as it pertains to the Miami Heat. You're asking LeBron to take less. You're asking him not to take the max. You're asking him to ignore all that TV money that was coming down the pike, et cetera, et cetera. You're also asking him to, you know, to forsake his friends to some degree. I was told that Pat Riley did go up to LeBron James one time and, 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 and literally imply that you might want to distance yourself, not, of course, not end your friendships or anything like that, but you might want to distance yourself from your friends. My point to you is that whether that's true or not, that's the impression that LeBron James was given. That kind of stuff contributes to somebody's willingness to want to be around you or more importantly, to have to answer to you, especially when you have an ulterior or an alternative that's in your hometown and you'd be the man and wouldn't have to deal with that. And as it pertains to Dwayne Wade, remember, I spoke to Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosch and all of these dudes and they love LeBron. He's their brother. And, LeBron, and you're right in terms of how Dwayne Wade would feel if he were 100 percent healthy and a few years younger. But going through the injuries that he's going through, when LeBron missed a grand total of 18 games games in a regular season in four years of Miami, but Dwayne Wade missed almost 50. It's a different ball game, Skip, because now you're looking at your own basketball mortality. So I don't think LeBron, Dwayne Wade was never offended by it. He told me he was never offended by it. LeBron just wanted to leave and go back home, and he can understand that. Plus, Dwayne Wade knows that health-wise, you know what? 
He hasn't been the healthiest guy in the world, and we all have to respect that. After the break, we're going to talk about the NFC East picture, the full picture, as these NFL roster moves are continuing to be made during the Like, who's going to win it? Who's going to win? You uh, want to pick already? Yeah, All right. I'm ready. We're doing it after the break, folks. We'll be right back in just a few moments. Like the man, never see it.